We're watching out for you. This is First News 3 at 4 with Kendall Tenney and Sophia Choi. New record-breaking unemployment numbers in Nevada and in Las Vegas. The news is even worse. Why, despite small signs of an economic rebound, jobs in the valley might be even harder to get. Plus, now that the Cash for Clunkers program is coming to an end, what you can do to still take advantage. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll get to those stories for you in just a moment. But first, it was designed to kill a homemade pipe bomb planted on a car at the Luxor parking garage. Today, the trial began for two people accused of killing a man with that bomb. And for the first time, we're getting a closer look at how the device was disguised. News 3's Denise Rosh was in the courtroom as prosecutors began laying out their case. You focus your attention right in that area. Boom. What you just saw was a murder on the Las Vegas Strip, a bomb blast that killed 24-year-old Willibaldo Antonio Durantes, targeted, prosecutors say, because of a woman. That is where the bomb went off. That is literally the impression of the pipe bomb on the hood of Willibaldo's Dodge Strap. It happened in May of 2007. Investigators believe Omar Rueda Denvers was angry that Dorantes was dating his ex-girlfriend. As the couple left work inside the Luxor Hotel, the bomb was already set. Denvers and an accused accomplice, Perfurio Duarte Herrera, leaving the innocent-looking device on the victim's car. The question that you may all be asking yourselves is what did the bomb look like? Didn't he know it? You're looking at it in my hand. Prosecutor David Stanton says this is an exact recreation of the deadly pipe bomb hidden inside a coffee cup. It exploded as Durantes went to remove what he thought was trash from the hood of his car. Scott Casey is with Luxor Security and was first on scene. He had a, a pool of blood around his head and his right hand was, most of it was gone. Although prosecutors say both men confess, they are now blaming each other. According to Denver's attorney Christopher Orem, his client was in the garage, but that's all. He says, no, I went there, I stopped the vehicle, I watched him get out, but I never saw him put a coffee cup there. I never noticed him with a coffee cup. But Herrera's attorney counters that he had no motive and wasn't part of the love triangle. Now it's up to the jury to decide what happened at the Luxor and whose version of the truth to believe. Denise Rosh, News 3. The woman at the center of the love triangle was in the country illegally. She's been deported to Guatemala, but her tape testimony is being played for the jury. As for the defendants, if convicted, they could face the death penalty. A reward is now being offered for information leading to the arrest of a reality TV contestant accused of killing a Las Vegas model. Today, U.S. Marshals have offered $25,000 to find this man, Ryan Jenkins, who may be in his native Canada at this point. Jenkins, who appeared on the VH1 show, Megan Wants a Millionaire, is charged with murdering Jasmine Fior. Her mutilated body was found stuffed in a suitcase in a trash dumpster in Orange County, California. Her teeth and fingers had been removed. Detectives say they believe Jenkins did that so it would be difficult to identify Fior, so they used the serial number from her breast implants to identify her. A local gaming legend has passed away. Frank Fertitta Jr., the founder of Station Casinos, died today at the age of 70. Fertitta is largely credited with creating Las Vegas's locals casino market. He arrived in Las Vegas back in 1960 and worked as a bellman at the Tropicana while learning to be a dealer. 16 years later, he opened the casino on West Sahara and tapped into the local market. His empire continued to grow until included more than a dozen properties. Fertitta's legacy includes widespread community and and philanthropic involvement. Kevin talked yesterday, yesterday about the heat warning for today, so it should have come as no surprise, but still, I guess, Kevin, there's just no way to prepare for the kind of heat you encounter. No, I suppose the good way to look at this is it'll probably be the last one we'll experience in 2009, but we were cooking today. 113, our water smart site downtown, that's the high temperature there, and a whole bunch of 107s, 108s, so 109 in southeastern parts of the valley, 109 as well as Centennial Hills. McCarran so far has made it to 109, which has tied the record for the date, and if you are heading out this afternoon, plan on a blast of 109 degree air, only cooling, if you want to call it that, to 103 by the middle of the evening. We'll get your Saturday started 
in the low to mid 80s, but hang on. It's getting very active already in parts of Arizona all the way down to Southern California on the Doppler radar. This moisture, this humidity will surge towards Southern Nevada, and so will a real good chance for thunderstorms. We'll talk about that for the weekend and beyond coming up in the forecast in just a couple of minutes, Kendall. All right, Kevin, the unemployment numbers are out and it doesn't look good for Las Vegas. The unemployment rate now stands at 13%. To put that into perspective, that is almost one in seven Las Vegans out of work. Statewide, the unemployment rate is 12.5%, and that means nearly 180,000 Nevadans are without a job right now. Most of them are in the state's largest industries, casinos, hospitality, and construction, and most of them are collecting unemployment benefits. If a person gets all the state and federal extensions allowed, they can claim unemployment for up to 79 weeks. That's a year and a half. At last count, the Nevada Department of Employment, Training, and Rehabilitation says there were more than 1,800 people who have maxed out their unemployment benefits. It's very discouraging to know that you've been out there pounding the pavement looking for a job and, and still no luck, and now you could be running out of your unemployment benefits. Right now, state officials don't know of any more unemployment benefit extensions coming from the state or federal government, but in the coming months, they do expect to see an increase of people who are exceeding their benefit limits. A huge success. That's what local dealers are saying about the government's Cash for Clunkers program just days before it comes to a screeching halt. As News 3's Dan Ball discovered, the $3 billion program has been a win-win for drivers and dealers. The government's Cash for Clunkers program ends in just about 72 hours, and although there's been a few bumps along the roadway over the past few weeks, most dealerships here in the Valley say it's been a huge success. In some cases, they tell me it's actually saved jobs and entire dealerships. Here at Planet Nissan in the northwest part of the Valley, they've already done over 200 Cash for Clunker deals in just the last month. And they say they expect to sell dozens more this weekend. Now nationwide, about 450,000 clunkers have been brought into dealers. General Manager Alex Estay here at Planet Nissan says if you plan on doing a deal this weekend, make sure you come prepared. Customers that come in wanting to take advantage of this uh, great incentive come in with their, all the paperwork ready to go, meaning the title for the vehicle, registration, insurance, etc. All the, all the paperwork that uh, it's necessary to qualify for this incentive. Remember, to qualify, first check the government's website, cars.gov, to ensure that your car will be accepted for the new one you want to purchase. Also, you must make sure that your clunker has been registered and insured in your name for the last 12 months and that the vehicle is drivable when you come to the dealership. No tow-ins will be allowed. Once the clunkers are traded in, the dealers actually have to pour acid into the engine block and run it until it stops. Then they're shipped off to a salvage yard here in the valley. They're parted out and then crushed. Alex Estay, the general manager at Planet Nissan, says that's great for salvage yards and people who own used cars looking for parts. In the northwest part of the valley, Dan Ball, News 3. Well, if you're planning on trading this weekend, you need to make sure you qualify before heading to the dealership. We've made that easy for you by linking the government's website to our homepage website, kvbc.com. Now, most new car dealerships will have extended hours tonight and Saturday. Some, in fact, will be open as late as midnight, but closed on Sunday. A hearing over tip pooling policies at Wynn Las Vegas won't start up again until October. A hearing between the two began earlier this week in front of the state labor commissioner. The dealers filed a class action lawsuit against Wynn, claiming its tip sharing policy violates state labor laws. Now, this is a story News 3 has been following closely since dealers started protesting the policy change in 2006. Commissioner Michael Tanchek has set aside two weeks of hearings starting October 5th. The commissioner also said a third week could be added if necessary. Well, if you use the I-15, then you know it's one of our busiest freeways. And today we have a little bit of an accident out there on the 15 and Sahara. Here's Tom Hawley in the News 3 Traffic Center with more. Well, Sophia, Friday afternoons are typically already a little bit busier than the rest of the week. And if you add an accident into the mix, you've got yourself a mess. That accident in the northbound lanes of 15, uh, just as you get up to Sahara, we do have a camera in the area. So let's go ahead and take a peek outside. And there's, there it is now. 
well, when I looked a moment ago, it was not blocking a travel lane. This is actually something else that just popped up. Now we have a vehicle that is blocking a travel lane, so you are going to see things now getting markedly worse. It was already bad on I-15 at Sahara. Now it's getting worse. Do you, drive, do you drive down 95 near Sumlin Parkway? There's temporary message signs that say closures coming, but by the time you get past the sign, the message isn't through yet. So when is it actually closing? Is it tonight? Is it tomorrow night? It's actually next week. If you've been alarmed about that, let's go ahead and take you over to the area. Uh, we're talking about that stretch of Summerlin Parkway in between US 95 and Buffalo. So no problem for this weekend. It's next Thursday night into Friday morning. You'll have a complete closure during that time. You want to use either a uh, Washington or Westcliff. Uh, and that all has to do with work on this Tenea overpass. It's going to go up over the top of Summerlin Parkway. Uh, we'll take a look as long as we're in the neighborhood of what's happening down at US 95 coming around around the horn here at the Rainbow Sumlin Interchange, and that is light traffic. So the big message now, if you're on your way out the door, stay away from northbound 15 Sahara. It is a mess. Kendall and Sevilla. Okay, got it. Thank you. Well, ladies, a haircut for just 20 bucks. Uh, sounds pretty crazy, huh? We're going to tell you where you can get one in our deal of the day. But first, kids, you've got a weekend of freedom <laughs> before the big yellow buses start rolling. How often do you see drivers run your stop sign? Every day. A day in the life of a school bus driver. Find out how they're getting ready for the start of the new year. Plus, is the godfather the biological father? A twist in Paris Jackson's paternal parentage. I had given something as a gift, and I didn't want any, anything in return for it. The gift that keeps giving and a paternity test in the works. Also, why a sugary Starbucks concoction could cost you more. Then, a victory lap with a less than victorious finish. A mascot piggyback ride presents a major hurdle. Kids first team went behind the scenes at Clark County Schools Transportation Department. We hit the road with driver Ted Witcher. And this week, Ted and other bus drivers did practice runs to make sure they can get to all their stops in the time allowed. He says the biggest challenge for him isn't the early hours or even the kids, but it's other drivers. The times that you drive home from work or go to work and you want to cuss a driver for cutting you off or doing something silly, and we've all seen that, well, you can multiply that by 10 for a school bus. The most common issue CCSD bus drivers see is people who do not obey the flashing lights or the stop sign that extends off the side of the school bus. You can get more information on transportation, immunizations, and other back-to-school things at the annual Cox Communication Back-to-School Fair. It happens tomorrow from 10 till 4 at the Galleria Mall in Henderson. We hope to see you out there. Some local kids got a powerful and loud lesson in making dreams come true. Youngsters at the Lee Boys and Girls Club were treated to the sounds of top-notch drummers like the Las Vegas Kaminari Taiko Troupe had a chance to MC the event, which was designed to inspire kids to pursue their dreams. The presentation was part of Project Shiro's Wonder Child Dream Explorer program. Mm. We might hear that kind of drumming coming from Mother Nature this Wouldn't weekend. Wouldn't that be nice? Yeah. yeah. And the good news here is we're looking at all the weather. I like our chances to see some thunderstorms in southern Nevada, but we've got some decent wind in the upper levels of the atmosphere. Basically, that means thunderstorms will be pushed. They won't sit in one area, so the chances of flooding, if they develop, are pretty Just small. cool things off. That's all people want right <laughs> That's now. the easy part. Yeah. That, done deal. In fact, we'll knock the temperature down between 10 and 15 degrees at least tomorrow afternoon around this time. Let's head over to the Weather Center. Lots to talk about today. Not only here, but with what's going on over in uh, the Atlantic with uh, big Hurricane Bill as well. Let's start with a live picture. This is our camera from on top of Fitzgerald's. It's looking off to the west. We were watching the clouds build over the mountains, but not a whole lot of clouds. A few fair weather cumulus clouds. There's more to the south, and they are heading our way. Temperature, oh yeah, we're cooking 108 degrees, 5 miles per hour in the wind, and not a whole lot of humidity yet. It's coming in at only 6%, but I bet you if you're with us tonight, all the way through 11 o'clock, you'll see that number jump, especially later on. Here are the current temperatures. If you're heading out this afternoon, they range anywhere from 104 to our water smart side of the lakes, 105 in North Las Vegas, Spring Valley at 107, same story for downtown Henderson. As we mentioned in McCarran, 109 so far for the high today, and that ties a record, a record that's been standing for 69 years. 83 was the morning low air quality still though in the good category. Inside the car, the carmometer, 
piping hot. 144 degrees, and we might be able to retire the carmometer too if uh, we start getting a whole lot more clouds and not quite the same heat. Now tomorrow we'll start in the low to mid 80s, low 90s by lunchtime, only mid 90s by late in the afternoon. Here's Bill downgraded to a category two storm. Great news. Now Bermuda is expecting one to three inches of rain. The winds are gusting over 30 miles per hour, and they're getting some big waves too, but not going to take a direct hit as Bill takes the big bend and her hooks on over to shipping interests out in the Atlantic. So here we are, and here come the clouds. Lots of moisture coming our way, and that moisture extends back toward parts of New Mexico, Arizona, and down through Mexico. That's going to slide on up overnight. We'll have lots of clouds tomorrow and a decent chance for some scattered thunderstorms, some of which could give us a pretty decent drink of water, especially during the afternoon hours. Overnight lows tonight, Sandy Valley at 76, Overton going down to 78. Then high temperatures tomorrow, well, they're going to be in the 90s. 85 will be our overnight low for the Las Vegas Valley under a partly cloudy sky. Tomorrow, only mid-90s for a high with the clouds on the increase. The chance for thunderstorms is 50-50. A lot is going to depend on how early the clouds get. We need some heat to help build those thunderstorms. Seven-day forecast, we like our chances for Sunday afternoon, too, and then slightly slightly more stable air comes in Monday and Tuesday before we dry out by the middle of next week. Just looking at what's going on down in Arizona, New Mexico, and the way it's moving, you got to think we're going to see some thunderstorms over the weekend. But again, they'll be scattered, so not every neighborhood will get them. Hopefully yours will, yeah. and mine too. So yeah. I can turn off the sprinklers for a day or two. Exactly. Yeah. All right. That was a nice move over there, by the way. I didn't that know you moved that quickly. Yeah. Yeah. You know, at my age, I'm lucky. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Well, there's a DVD recall to warn you about coming from Walmart. Walmart is recalling about a million and a half Dura brand DVD players. They, There's been uh, five reports of products overheating and catching on fire. They were sold at Walmart from January 2006 through July of this year. The Chinese-made players can be returned to Walmart for a full refund. Well, if it's harder to make, it's going to cost you more. Starbucks has raised prices up to 30 cents on some specialty drinks like frappuccinos and caramel macchiatos, but the chain is dropping prices on 12-ounce lattes and brewed coffees by 5 to 15 cents. Starbucks is struggling to find profits, even offering alcoholic beverages in a few Seattle locations. The godfather of Michael Jackson's children has come out and says he is the biological father of one of those children. And Alicia Jacobs joins us now with more in today's Stage 3 report. Exactly, guys. A friend of Michael Jackson says he could be the biological father of Jackson's daughter, Paris. From a child actor, Mark Lester is the godfather of Jackson's three children, and he told the Today Show's Matt Lauer he did indeed donate sperm for Jackson at a London clinic. Now, he told the Today Show's Matt Lauer he wanted to do this because Jackson was a good friend. Lester said he confided in him and this is what he had to say to Lauer. If he's uncomfortable with the act of having sex with a woman, he could still use his own sperm exactly to become the biological father of a child. Why did he need your sperm? Exactly. Uh, that I don't know. Lester says he did it because Michael was a very close friend and he is willing to take a paternity test. Now, there is a definite resemblance between Lester's 15-year-old daughter and Paris Jackson. So, if you're keeping track, all three kids have different biological fathers. Prince, fathered by Dr. Arnie Klein, and Blanket by Miko Brando, son of the late Marlon Brando. Incidentally, I'm hearing that the Jackson family is attempting to silence Brando, who has been hired by CNN as a paid consultant. They're trying to hold him to his confidentiality agreement. Guys, that's what's up. Wow, so many twists and turns. Always. Huh? Yeah, thank you, Alicia. <laughs> well, here's a look at what's coming up on News 3 at 5 o'clock. A warning from the World Health Organization, an explosion of swine flu might be just around the corner. What we try to find is a balance um, be between being proactive and um, not overreacting. What's expected from the virus this fall and how the vaccine trials are going. And addicted to technology, how a rehab clinic is helping internet addicts step away from the computer. Plus a wine that's actually good for the diet. The new drink that promises fewer calories. Those stories and more coming up tonight on News 3 at 5. Still to come in this newscast, get your shag shagged. Where you can get a sweet haircut for just 20 bucks in our deal of the day. That's coming up.
Well, if you're looking for a job, you may be tempted anyway to sign on with a job search firm mm -hmm. or to get faster results. Uh, you may do something like that. The question is, do they deliver? Well, Jim Snyder joins us now with a saving you money tip of the day. Yeah, unfortunately, there are people out there always willing to prey on someone's desperation. There are legitimate firms that can help find some job leads, no doubt about that. But you need to watch out for companies that misrepresent their services. They list outdated or even fake job postings sometimes or charge high upfront fees for services that don't lead to a job. Before you sign on or give anyone your money, find out exactly what the company is offering and how much it costs. Request a written contract and understand the terms of the firm's refund policy. And if they promise you anything that, uh, that doesn't appear in the written contract, think twice about doing business with that firm. You can find more information about job search firms at the FTC's website. It's a good resource. We've got that link for you if you go to kbbc.com and click on Saving You Money. Okay, good deal. Thank you, mm -hmm. Jim. And now to our deal of the day, especially for you ladies who are used to shelling out $100 or more for a haircut. Well, Shag Me Salon is holding a Shagathon on Sunday where you can get a wash and a cut for just 20 bucks. It'll go from 10 to 5, walk ins only. All proceeds, including tips, will be do donated to the American Cancer Society's Relay for Life. Well, we've heard of elephant trainers and even lion trainers. But what about an alligator trainer? See what this giant lizard can do coming up. Am I in the next puzzle? No. How about the next one? No. But why? Wheel of Fortune, letter perfect. Yes, I'm married to my husband, Kevin, who is also a teacher. Next week, it's back to school with a twist. Year-round classrooms, money for teachers, and new ways for college students to stay in school. Making the Grade, a special series, next week on NBC Nightly News with Brian Williams. One Florida woman has no fear when it comes to alligators. Hey. This trainer gets up close and personal with these gators. Candace Donato is one of the few people in the country to take her training to the water. That looks like an albino alligator there, huh? Well, she gives the gators fish meal treats for good behavior. Christmas has come early to a small British city. The city council of Rochdale voted this week to start decorating for the holidays. Soon after the vote, city workers were busy hanging Christmas lights. City officials say they'll have all their decorations up by October. But in order to save money, the city won't be turning on the lights just yet. Okay. Well, she just won the 400-meter hurdles. How this mascot made a victory lap for this participant into something much different. Coming up. From the mascot here in Berlin. All right, it's Friday, mm -hmm, right? We mm -hmm. want to leave on a happy note, maybe some happy thoughts, some giggles even. Yeah, and this next video will most likely do just that. This comes from the IAAF World Championships in Germany. Okay, that's Melanie Walker from Jamaica. She had just won the 400 meter hurdles with a great time, 52.42. Uh, she takes the victory ride on the back of the mascot and then boom! Wasn't watching where he was going. Yeah, and there it is yeah. in slow-mo. Oh! Always run with your head up. Yeah. Well, you know, you know, but look, they pop right up, both of them. I he, think the suit protected him, and she, she's, she's, she's fine. No, no worse for the wear. No, she's going on adrenaline, adrenaline look, right there. Look, she's doing anyway. it again. No, I'm, that's just the replay. <laughs> we were given this update that no mascots were killed in the filming of this promotion. <laughs> right. So Thank this goodness. just in to the Channel oh, 3 newsroom. Gosh. You can have that back. That is My funny goodness. to watch, though. Hey, thanks for joining us. Judge Judy's up next. Bye-bye.